Schwant, you fucking hypocrite. You said you weren't getting Halo 5 because there was no open beta. You're not being a hypocrite if with new information you change your mind. And that's what happened here. My new evidence? I got to try the game out and that was the crux of my argument in the video that I mentioned earlier. Publishers need to allow people to try out their game in order to win them over. Otherwise, I'm not even going to bother buying it. Yes, I will rent a game to try it out, and then I will purchase it if it wins me over. But otherwise, you guys are shit out of luck. Put the pitchforks down, dickheads. So on the night that Black Ops 3 came out, I made an additional purchase at the register. I bought Halo 5 used at GameStop and they told me that I had until Sunday January 17th to return the game since they were giving extra time for game returns during the holiday season. Sick! Now I have two and a half months instead of one week to give Halo 5 a trial. I'll admit, the first few times on this game, I didn't really enjoy myself. As somebody who hasn't played Halo since Halo 3, aside from a handful of games on Reach when it was free with gold, I was not used to playing the game at all, especially with the new movement system in this game. After I immersed myself though, I was really having fun. This is a great alternative to how Black Ops 3 plays and I decided after the deadline came and passed that I was going to hold on to Halo 5 after renting it. The new mechanics feel really good in this game as I was somebody who enjoyed the exo movement of Advanced Warfare. Halo 5 injects gameplay mechanics that you come to expect from a shooter game as standard practice nowadays. Unlimited sprint, aim down sight, which is only on certain weapons, sliding, and boosts. 343 did a great job at taking these elements that are quote unquote standard and apply them to the halo formula of the longer time to kill with emphasis on accuracy and the concept of the shield even though there are times when far too often i get a few shots up on a player and they boost over to cover i think that the small metagame aspects like not having shields recharge while sprinting allows the meta of halo to play correctly even with it being faster paced and less quote unquote floaty i really enjoy the cat and mouse like engagements in halo with the longer time to kill it allows people that master the Spartan abilities to win gunfights by Halo jumping or boost strafing or charge melee. On to the different game modes now and I've definitely been playing more Warzone than Arena. Being a Battlefield fan I really enjoy the giant battles that the 12v12 Warzone brings. It's similar to Domination from Call of Duty or Conquest in Battlefield where you control points on the map and you could spawn on those points. I do wish we kind of had a buddy system like in Halo Reach but I could see that it could be extremely chaotic if we had those type of spawns. Imagine you're shooting the shit out of somebody and all of a sudden spawn out of nowhere yeah that might get a little annoying right you get a standard loadout with an assault rifle and a pistol but opening wreck packs that are earned from completing challenges and matches can give you a chance to put more weapons into the starting loadout rotation like the smg and the battle rifle i'm lucky enough to have earned the smg and br and wreck packs which i think are much better than the starting ar and pistol combo i've heard that the dmr is even better but i'd rather rock the br personally i'd much rather do burst weapons than semi-automatics. I also have special variants of these weapons whereby my battle rifle does incendiary damage which is increased damage to vehicles which is awesome because fuck vehicle horse. Herein lies my biggest problem though with Warzone. Weapon variants made it very difficult for me when I started. I had to grind the game getting shit on by people with better weapons and then get lucky to get the SMG and BRs out of the rec packs that I earned in the game but since everything is about the bottom line you could also buy these packs with real cash money in order to get cards to get a better chance at these gun variants. It's not nearly as bad in Advanced Warfare since better variants actually cost more points. Let me show you how it works. Each player starts off with zero points and for every killer action they take, they accumulate more rec levels. The standard battle rifle is unlocked at rec level 3 and my variant, which is the more incendiary damage, is at level 4. So I need to earn it in a match by getting more kills. Same with my long barrel SMG variant at level 6 when the standard is level 4. So as you play the game and get more kills and accumulate more stats, you'll be able to use some of the better weapons. Other weapons like the needler or the sniper rifle are one-time use weapons and cost you the amount of levels that's designated by the weapon so if you're level six and equip a needler which is a cost of three you're down to level three now so 
you have to choose wisely. It's almost like a Titanfall burn card with a cost factor, which is a great way to balance things. However, it can get annoying when you have tons of enemy vehicles and equip a rocket launcher only to die on the way to blowing up the fucking vehicle. Perhaps if you don't get to use the weapon, you get to keep it for the next spawn. I think that would be more fair, but either way, this cost system is much better balanced than any other game that has different gun variants in it, and it doesn't allow enemies to constantly call in vehicles or to get god tier guns when the match starts. However, it is an uphill battle if your team falls behind, because those enemies will definitely have more rec levels than you, and thus will have access to those better weapons and vehicles. Which brings me to another huge gripe, the scoring. I'm a pretty competitive player, and I like to win matches, but my mind stayed in Warzone is just to simply kill whore while always trying to control the objectives. If I wanted to shoot spongy AI, I'd half my frame rate and go play Destiny. Not to mention, the way that points are distributed has to change. The game awards the point bonus only to the team which actually gets the kill on the AI boss. So, even if Team A does 90% of the damage to it, Team B will get the 150 points if it gets the last shot. My solution to this would be to split the points based on damage dealt and give a slight bonus to the team that gets the final shot for the kill. This is way more fair for divvying up the points. Not to mention, the locations of the AI should get changed up as they are a predictable pattern each match so people could just quote unquote camp the locations of the higher point bosses in order to get a jump on them the other game mode is arena which is the classic halo style mode which i always enjoy the strategy of controlling areas of the map for power weapons i did enjoy playing some big team battle of which the ctf matches are always nail biters and really kick in the nostalgia of playing halo games past my big issue with arena is the fact that if you're unranked you're gonna get fucking destroyed those 10 placement matches are brutal especially by people that know the game and or running in a squad of four i actually think that the social 5v5 playlist is better for these maps because of their increased side due to the way that the movement plays the maps had to be designed to be slightly bigger and slightly more vertical but sadly i think that was only a temporary thing i do hope they bring it back the spawns in arena are sometimes atrocious which is unacceptable due to the paltry amount of players on these maps free for all is a good time but again the spawns leave something to be desired Overall, the hit detection is mostly solid as well as the connections. There are times that I'm surprised that I killed somebody or they killed me because of the net coding, but it's nowhere near as frustrating as in Black Ops 3, where the pace of engagements are so much faster that you actually notice how poor the infrastructure of Call of Duty actually is. This game reminds me a lot of Titanfall, between the big team game modes with the AI and the longer time to kill giving the rock, paper, scissors type engagements, where accuracy, movement, and strategy, as George Bush would say, matters. The lack of content also also echoes of Titanfall, which many hardcore fans are not too thrilled about. But I think the reason for this was the fallout of the Halo Master Chief Collection disaster, where the matchmaking was so bad the game was virtually unplayable for months. I have a feeling that the dev team focused on making the gameplay mechanics crisp and work as perfect as it could be, which in turn then left them little time to add content. There just simply aren't enough maps to go around, but luckily the Halo community is very passionate about the game, so there's lots of user-created maps in Forge, which the devs will adopt into rotation based on player feedback they've added so many things in the short three months that this game has been out with constant updates that i don't foresee the same longevity issues that plague titanfall i mean look at this camo on this pistol how fucking sick is it it's a goddamn french fry camo put that shit on the grill and check out the caption salt everywhere nacl confirmed what about you guys? Have you played Halo 5? If so, do you like it? Why? Why not? Let me know down below. I've been streaming the game for a bit, so you'll most likely see some highlights in the form of rage compilations and maybe some funny moments, so hopefully you guys are excited about that as well. I've been the Schwantz 27 out like O'Malley from the Iowa Caucuses. Until next time.